the radical shift of preferred metal from steel to aluminum webhinner. Good evening, everyone. My name is Deepu Deshaputran. I am a senior research analyst with Market Research Future. Along with me today is Charudat Gangude. He is a research analyst at Market Research Future. Hello, everyone. We, we both welcome you to the present webinar. So the, our webinar title, The Radical Shift of Preferred Metal from Steel to Aluminium is based on the recent trends of lightweight materials that is going, going across the globe. So we have our reports based on this, both of the metals that are steel and aluminium. And here is a highlight of how, highlight of the comparison of how these industries are moving and why the end use industries are preferring aluminium over steel. So the key, so the key areas of discussion today will be the supply demand balance, factors driving the switch, price comparison, some regulatory trends, along with the end use mega mega trends and key developments of the of the com, major operate, uh, companies operating in these markets. So let's begin with the supply and demand scene. So here let's talk about the raw materials here the raw material advantage of aluminum over steel so the major raw materials that is used is bauxite so which is most abundantly found in the earth's crust and generally this bauxite con contains 40 to 60 percent of hydrated alumina oxide which is for the smelted to aluminum Around 90% of bauxite reserves are located in the tropical and subtropical regions, covering many miles and average with an average thickness of four to six meters. Some of the major countries with bauxite reserves are Africa, Oceania, South America, and Caribbean. So the aluminum industry is the major consumer of bauxite mined across the world and it is available in surplus, which makes it an advantage for aluminum production over steel. Whereas in steel, there is a shortage of coal. Coal is primarily is used for the production uh, in the thermal power plants. In, for instance, in country like India, where there is a supply deficit of coal for the steel industry, majority of the chunk is going into thermal thermal power so that brings us to our the supply side of aluminum how the aluminum is supplied in, across the globe going forward in the supply in the supply side we have a huge supply surplus in this market we have uh, the world is producing uh, producing aluminum uh, over producing an aluminum since 2009 and in January, February 2017, the world has produ produced the biggest aluminum since 2009 in this period, which was valued at around 858 kilotons. And China has single-handedly uh, contribute uh, single-handedly the major contributor in this overall imbalance. China has produced over 100, uh, 1 million metric tons of uh, aluminum during uh, which which was the three-year high in the recent period going forward we have uh, in front of us this slide wherein we can see the bauxite production in 2018 in terms of uh, kilotons australia as uh, is the largest uh, bauxite produ producer which uh, which was valued at around 83000 kilotons in 2018 followed by china guinea brazil and india india So coming back to the production of that was the raw material side from Charu. Now going ahead with the production of aluminum, primary aluminum. Here we can see China as the largest producer. No doubt the, com the country consumes also more than 40 to 40 to 45 percent of the primary aluminum. It is mostly driven by the end use industries like automotive and electrical in the region along with the consumer goods and packaging so followed by that is russia a company rusal rusal is the main player there and followed by which is canada india and uae so talking about 
the demand. So to categorize this aluminum into two different categories, we have primary and secondary. Secondary aluminum refers to the recycled aluminum which is being used from the end of life product. And a very amazing property of aluminum is it can be reused 100% without losing any of its properties, unlike steel. So that is one parameter which is propelling its demand in the market in terms of uh, value and volume. So to add, <coughs> if we bifurcate the geographies, mostly the developing economies still rely on the primary aluminum, whereas the developed economies such as North America and Europe, they are mostly concentrating on, uh, they are trying to, trying to recover more of secondary aluminum and reuse it for a circular economy. Going forward in terms of demand, here we have a pie chart which is signi uh, which is demonstrating the overall demand for uh, primary aluminum in various uh, in different in major regions in 2018. This is a volume percent share where wherein we can see the overall demand for primary aluminum is highly concentrated in Asia Pacific, which is accounted for over 60% of the market, and the 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 most uh, important uh, region here is the Middle East and Africa, which has caught up very quickly with other developing regions and accounted for over 15 percent share in 2018. Now, looking at the steel demand, although the demand seems positive, the growth, the overall growth of the market is around. Why is that? Around. 2.43% for the next five years. Whereas if we see towards the aluminum demand, the market is robustly growing in terms of a materials perspective. The market is overall demand is projected to grow over 6% in the coming five years in terms of demand. So mainly the major use industries identified for this for aluminium demand are mainly coming from transportation, automotive, aerospace, construction, and consumer goods. So why, why this shift to aluminium from steel? So uh, talking, talking about the major factors which are driving the shift from steel to aluminium, are here which we can see in the present slide these factors are basically related to the physical properties of both metals talking about malleability as we all know al aluminum is softer and more malleable and elastic as compared to steel on the uh, on the other hand steel is very hard and denser material as compared to aluminum weight difference is very much as we can see in the slide steel is around 2.5 times denser than aluminum which is not suitable for various applications wherein the density or the weight of the material is an important parameter and the other thing is recyclability of aluminum as compared to steel Aluminium can be easily recycled without losing any of its properties and it can be readily recycled over and over. In addition, recycling of aluminium reduce, reduces the re reliance on our natural ores as well as it reduces the cost of energy inputs for the same. And uh, I would like to highlight an emerging application that is for the aerospace industry, how the aluminum alloys are taking its uh, way into the aluminum in the aerospace industry. And similarly for the automotive, like for instance, uh, we are all well known to the manufacturer Ford who launched its 
pickup truck F1 F250 based on a chassis F150 sorry F150 based on the chassis made of aluminium entirely aluminium without jeopardizing any of the performance parameters it has increased the fuel efficiency of the vehicle so similarly more luxury car brands like audi mercedes benz and land rover are going to adopt this thing over steel hence that is an added advantage for the producers of aluminium operating in the industry and coming back to the aerospace aerospace a very highly scrutinized industry with uh, more and more air traffic increasing the uh, penetration of aluminium is also going into the aircraft man body manufacturing for various parts like as fuselage wing scales and structural structural components and various other shapes so aluminium is a very economically uh, viable substitute for aircraft manufacturing which which doesn't compromise on the quality whereas it helps in reducing the overall weight of the aircraft as well as increases the fuel efficiency so automotive and aerospace is some two uh, end use industries that uh, has that will be having a very brighter impact on the consumption of aluminium in the coming years so coming back to our points of factors driving uh, the switch from steel to aluminum in terms of application and property further we have a corrosion corrosion which is an important and critical parameter when we uh, when we cut and form various uh, various parts of uh, in various industries industry derived from various metals so aluminum is highly resistant to corrosion and oxidation due to its passivation layer which is an obvious advantage for the road transport marine and automotive applications wherein the corrosion is a critical factor going forward is a conductivity as we all know aluminum is a very good conductor of heat and electricity which drives its demand in various end use industries such as uh, air conditioning and cooling in automotive and at the same time it is uh, vastly used in the electrical industry for power transmission so let's come back to the pricing of this both metals no doubt stainless steel is more expensive however the crude steel crude steel and aluminum comparison we can see that aluminum uh, that steel is far more cheaper than aluminum however considering the advantages the price mm -hmm. of aluminum is is more in the market however the advantages are also yeah yeah and as you rightly said even though the price of aluminum metal is higher uh, is on the higher side uh, as we have seen the uh, various uh, favorable advantages we can uh, definitely prefer aluminum over steel in all the major end use industries coming back to the pricing i would like to add one more point is the over supply of aluminum which is creating large pressure on the lre the recent news state that the prices has fallen for aluminum and it is also continued to do so so it is not a good news for the producers however the demand is anyway going to grow so i think with the some in our next slide i think the production cutdowns will is the prices i think it will is projected to go up in a couple of years so some of the environmental aspects that are supporting as well as hindering the market growth for aluminum production there is a crackdown on the bauxite mining so the as problems associated with the mining of bauxite which can be hindered similarly for in alumina as well the emission of gases and particles the smokes from smelting these are the some of the environmental parameters associated with aluminum production which might hinder the 
demand however with more and more recycled and secondary aluminium coming into picture this will be curbed in the coming years further further adding into the environmental crackdown we can see some of the various environmental trends which are hindering the growth uh, growth in terms of production of uh, all the three important uh, uh, as, uh, three important components of the value chain in uh, aluminum production uh, which are bauxite alumina and lastly the aluminum increasing focus over scrap or secondary aluminum in euro uh, is likely is likely to favor the uh, the growth of recycled or the secondary aluminum uh, whereas it has to curb uh, or cut down the production uh, or the mining of bauxite uh, also in europe more than 90% of aluminum is used from the scrapped uh, uh, from the uh, scrapped uh, aluminum parts those are mainly used in automobile to uh, make it lightweight and make it more fuel efficient similarly in china brazil and india they are mostly focusing over the production of secondary aluminum even though they have the vast bauxite reserves this is something which is very crucial uh, for uh, for the bauxite rich countries which are not producing bauxite and mainly focusing over the production of secondary aluminum this is likely to, uh, this is likely to hinder the market growth for primary aluminum in coming years however there are some of the favorable regulations over say supply side drivers which will make which will give some good news for the aluminum producers operating in the market so one is the one belt road one belt one road in uh, initiative road initiative taken by china to re revive the old silk route to europe under this plan china is boosting its infrastructure development which will be creating a lot of opportunities for aluminum along with the installed capacity of 174 gigawatts of photovoltaic cells in 2018 china becomes has become the world's largest pv cells and solar energy producer in the world, across the world so and uh, additional plans to install 105 gigawatt capacity solar capacity in the coming years or by 2020 it's again it will boost again the demand for primary aluminum in china walking the same path india is following the footsteps of china in terms of industrialization the growing industrialization in india has incentivized the major automotive manufacturers to ship their production units to this country uh, and that's that's made that has made india as one of the major automotive manufacturing hub in southeast asia additionally the uh, rapid urbanization has prompted the government of india to introduce the housing for all scheme uh, in uh, the more over there is a very the various plans uh, in place uh, uh, for the indian government which are like solar energy installation india indian government has recently over achieved its solar capacity uh, by over 4 uh, 4 gigawatt and it has planned to install around 100 gigawatt of solar Uh, solar uh, solar energy capacity by two uh, by 2022. Now coming back to the emission regulations in the automotive, which is the highlight for uh, consumption of aluminium in the automotive industries, due to its lightweight properties, corrosions, and workability, that is the one thing. And the European Commission. has framed a new strategy in 2060 for low emission mobility to decarbonize the transportation sector and uh, this fact will highly impact the demand for aluminum among the automotive oems and as we see as i was talking previously like for bmw audi mercedes benz this are some of the major manufacturers that are adopting these changes rapidly and similarly the dicast aluminium products that are coming into the picture for various automotive component so all together with the cumulative aim of reducing the emissions and for adhering to the emission regulations i think uh, aluminium will be playing a very important and vast role in the coming 
going forward is uh, one of the most important slide in our presentation which is the mega trends of uh, the use of aluminum in the major end use industry first uh, first to talk about is the transportation and aircraft engineering at present we can see that uh, the steel is likely to be replaced in automotive industry in coming years the, uh, by five to six years down the line additionally the aluminum account for over 90 90 percent of spacecraft and 80 percent of the aircraft materials used in manufacturing of these of these uh, the fuse leg or the uh, or the the jet engines in spacecrafts and aircrafts going forward is a construction industry which is on the boom in various developing industries uh, like china india and various other southeast asian economies wherein the demand for uh, aluminum is uh, witnessing a robust growth in terms uh, in terms of uh, the lightweight material and similarly the penetration in the electrical and electronics for transmission lines and other electronic components aluminum is not new to this industry it has been used from decades and centuries so that is one prominent sector that is the power transmission lines and uh, again the properties like good electric conductivity and corrosion resistance of aluminium is the major driver of trend that is propelling its growth in the coming years when similarly for packaging industry with canned and packed foods are an integral part of our day-to-day -day life now this the demand in food packaging for aluminium is seen to grow robustly in the coming years especially from the emerging economies of china india and southeast asian countries similarly if we look at the middle east and african markets they will they also hold a huge potential in terms of the application of aluminium foils in the packaging sector so going ahead uh, the key developments and key capacity additions and shutdowns that uh, you can see in this slide so these are the recent expansions that has been done by various top aluminium operators across the globe so to continue we can see around 12 expansions till nine from 2016 to 2019 12 companies has been involved in various capacity expansions in contrast to that there has been only three shutdowns of plant which is detailedly explained in our reports that has been published so customized reports and regional reports on aluminium and steel market and the various dynamics are uh, involved in this reports and this is to conclude these are some of the major trends that we have observed in the industry aluminium and steel industry how why this radical shift from aluminium is from steel to aluminium so these are some of the key findings which we have highlighted today in this session. For more information, we can uh, we can all you can always log into our website that is www.marketresearchfuture.com, and uh, you can raise your queries. And if you have any questions regarding this webinar, you can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Cordially fill in sample request for more details.